Hello. The topic I would like to cover with you today is time management. We know from physics that time is endless. It was born with a big bang, and thereafter it will be ongoing and will go for who knows how much longer. Endless. While time is limitless or endless, energy is fixed and sometimes we confuse between the two. It's scary to think about death. Thus, we assume the time is endless. We are going to live forever. We only recognize the time is limited when we are on our deathbed. At our deathbed, we ask ourselves, what did we do with our life? On our deathbed, we recognize the value of life, which is time. I had this experience when my mother was dying. She was in a bad situation. And the doctor said, look, we can continue keeping her alive but it will be like a vegetable. Do you want that? And I said, no, I don't want it to continue suffering. Disconnect. Disconnect all the wires and all the tubes and let her die. And I was sitting next to her bed and she was looking at me. She could not talk. And I think she could see. And I realized what probably went through her mind. What would she give to keep alive another minute? What would we give to live another year? Everything, right? That's when somebody puts a gun to your head and says, money in your life, you give them all your money because you want life. But energy is fixed. How do we allocate our energy to reflect, the time is also fixed. I am 83. My father died when he was 86. But I assumed that I didn't go through the Second World War like he did. He had a difficult life. I will live maybe several years more than him. Let's assume I will live up to 90. Although I think the last years are not going to be that enjoyable you spend it mostly in hospitals and with doctors to keep alive. Let's assume I have net good five years left. It's only about 1,700 days, 1,800 days, 2,000 days. Guys, if you really sit and ask yourself, how many days do you have? All at once, it becomes extremely valuable Every day, what you do. That's the, there is an expression, live as if you are dead. Why? Because when you die, nothing matters anymore. Everything that you thought was so important when you were alive becomes useless when you die. So if you live as if you die, always ask yourself the question, does it really matter what I'm doing? Does it really matter? Would anybody remember when I die? Would anybody care about it when I die? That will give you a filter to evaluate what you're doing. How you allocate your energy, which means allocate your time. Does it really matter? So what matters the most? What matters the most? It continues after you die because it doesn't have time nor space limits. It's limitless. What is it? Love. Love knows no time limits, no space limits. And when you die, whatever you did with love during your lifetime continues. Your children remember the loving time they had with you. Your spouse will remember the loving time they had with you. If you did anything for the community, love continues. 
it perpetuates, it reproduces. Love counts. Babies that don't experience love do not grow healthy. They are emaciated. Put a person in a isolation, whatever it's called, cell in a prison. They commit suicide. The worst punishment you can have is isolation. Why? You have no love. Some prisoners fall in love with a bird that visits their window. Oh my God. Worse by living. People take dogs to raise. Why? Somebody to wiggle their tail and love you regardless of what you did to them the day before. They love you unconditionally. You need love when you come home. Somebody to love you when you come home. So what's the most important thing to dedicate time to? Love. And starting with loving yourself. That's why you focus on the heart. That's why in my meditation, I recall the sense of sensation of love. I look, by focusing on my heart, I want to feel love. And my continuous remembrance is how do I continue feeling love throughout the day? So the first priority in allocation of time is to love. Loving yourself first. Don't do damage to yourself. Eating the wrong food, not sleeping, not exercising, getting into destructive relationships, hating yourself, hating people around you. Love prolongs life, hate shortens life. Look at people that are in love, even if they're old, their eyes are shiny, full with energy. And look at people that hate. They look like a squeezed lemon. They're dying. So open your calendar. That's how you do it. You should budget time like you budget money. What percentage of your time? Assume there is a 100% time. Good. Well, some of it you have to sleep. Some of it is going to be for you're old, you, you go to doctors, you know, maintenance your health. Of the time left, assume that's 100%. How much of it do you want for integration, for love? Starting with yourself, meditation every day, satsang on the weekend. But then, how much love are you going to give to your spouse? Time together. Then to the children. They start from the inside out. You first, family second. Children, time one-on-one, -on -one. it's called quality time. Assume Sundays are dedicated to, the, or whatever is your Sabbath. Could be Friday, could be Saturday, could be Sunday, depending on your religion. The togetherness, whether it's a synagogue or a mosque or whatever it is, or a national. The togetherness, first priority. What's the next priority? Putting things in order, having order in your life, having the right things at the right place, having budgets so you know where you're spending your money and not get being caught by surprises, having order in your life, order in your family, order in your company, order, which requires time and energy to dedicate to it. So you don't let the paper accumulate on your desk and you don't know what's going on and what's happening and you're totally lost and confused. That will waste your energy, does not work. And what is the third in priority? To improve yourself, to learn, to grow. Allocate time to be continuously growing and improving. Otherwise, you will be aging. Look at people that stop growing, they retire, and they're just sitting there and waiting for death, as a matter of fact. Absolutely not. You should continue keeping your mind active. Keep your soul active, your spirit active, alive. And you prolong your life. So what changes are you going to have in your life? It doesn't have to be every week or every day. You can say every three months I'm going to take 
time off, you know, to take a course, to learn something new, or I'm going to read a book every evening, something that keeps you growing. Because when you stop growing, you start dying. The last one there is work. Working so that you can support yourself and your family and be alive and building your assets. Now, the truth is that this should be put in brackets. Why? Because if you're in a developing country and you're starving and you need food, the first priority get yourself food, obviously. Love can wait. First of all, I need to earn a living to bring bread to the family, feed my children. But if you are already in a developed country where you have enough to live on, more is not necessarily better. Bigger a bank account is, does not make you happier. Having a bigger house does not necessarily make you happier. A Jewish expression is Marbe Mamon, Marbe Deaga, which means the more money you have, the more worries you have. Simple life, simple life, simple food. That is a secret. And for that, allocate your time in the following order. First, for integration of yourself, of your family, of your community, of your country, or if your consciousness is so high, with the environment, protecting the environment. Then, getting order in your life. Then, improving yourself. And the last one is working for survival. Unless you're in a developed country, developing country and you're starving to death. This all should be put into the calendar. You have 100% what percentage is for love, for integration, what percentage is for order, what percentage is for change, and what percentage is for working. And then you start allocating it on your calendar. Like for integration, I'm going to take one long weekend a month. Stop work if you can afford it, depending if you are on your own or you're self-employed or not. But take your vacations. And on vacations, I'm not going to take work with me. It's going to be, the purpose is for integration. Integrating myself, sleeping well, eating well, relaxing, relaxing with my family, put it in the calendar. And then, let's say, when are you going to sit down and organize your papers and organize whatever you need to do, your budgets, your papers, the contracts, whatever you're doing. Let's assume every Monday morning, let's assume, if you're an executive, you have executive committee meeting. And then what percentage is for change? I'm going to take a course, I'm going to read, whatever. And the rest of it for work. And then at the end of every month, you should compare what you budgeted to what you actually did. And there's always going to be deviation. And then ask yourself, how do I correct it next month? So that when you're in your deathbed, you don't say, ah, I built a big empire, left a lot of money for my children, but I don't know my children. Left a lot of money for my spouse, but I don't even know what her name is. Forgot who she is. Manage your life, manage your time, or the problems will manage you. And at the end of your life, you will say, ah, I missed the boat. Thank you.